Hello gorgeous peeps, welcome to another Trouser Tickling episode of Techspert Weekly, the weekly tech news show that still presses ahead even when there's bugger all tech news all week long. Hence the absolute garbage fire that was last week's episode. But praise be, there is actually some tech news this week. I can't promise that any of it is actually particularly interesting or that any of it indeed has been properly researched. But you know what, just like your mum last night, I'm going to grab it with both hands and just get stuck in. Jingle me! Techspert Weekly! Now first up, if you like your phone a bit bendy, well, Vivo's latest bit of news will be so firmly lodged up your alley, it'll be repeating on you for days. The fresh new Vivo X Fold has been officially unveiled and it's a proper whopper, sporting a 6.5 inch external display and a mighty 8 inch screen that's revealed when you tease it on open. And that's a great big leap over the Oppo Find N which serves up smaller 5.5 and 7 inch panels respectively. Vivo's hinge looks just as advanced as Oppo's as well so you should once again get a near flawless flat screen experience when the phone is unfolded. And apparently you can enjoy constant aggressive folding and unfolding without falling to bits. According to Vivo's official trailer, the X-Fold is the perfect companion for when you're fannying about in prehistoric caves or somewhat inadvisably going for a bit of a jog in what appears to be a violent apocalyptic shitstorm. And I certainly wouldn't recommend balancing it precariously on a bunch of rocks either. In fact, I'm not sure that any of this would be covered by your basic warranty shenanigans, so maybe just knock it off, alright? As for the general specs of the Vivo X Fold, well they're basically an upgrade over the Find N in pretty much every way. Performance comes courtesy of a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 backed by 12 gigs of RAM while the bendy frame has a 4600mAh battery crammed inside with 66W wired charging support and 50W wireless if you can't be having any of that annoying cable bollocks. On the R end, you've got a quad camera setup, you've got a 50 meg main sensor, a 48 meg ultra wide, 12 meg telephoto with 2 times optical zoom and a 5 times periscope zoom as well. These can be used to take a selfie by flipping the front screen around but you also have a 16 meg sphincter cam stuck away in both of those displays if you need them for skyping, zooming, all that kind of good stuff. So far so nipple chafingly exciting but don't get too carried away because right now there's no mention at all of the Vivo X Fold actually making it outside of China and coming over here to Blighty. Hopefully that'll change at some point though and if it does make it to the UK you can bet your left bum cheek I'll be stood there in line ready to get my greasy mitts all over it. Also this week Nubia, part of the ZTE fam, launched a global version of the fresh Red Magic 7 Pro, a beef-tastic game and blower boasting the usual super premium specs tucked inside of a see-through casing. So you can make sure that they didn't stiff you on any of those pricey components. A 6.8 inch 120Hz AMOLED screen serves up a full view of all that action with no selfie cam orifices to get in the way. You've also got 960Hz touch sampling so you can effortlessly murder their living heck out of other PUBG fans. No worries if you're a fan of the PUBGs, the Genshin Impacts, whatever you like, it should all run buttery smoothly thanks to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset again, this time backed by a mighty 16 gigs of RAM. And hopefully that performance should stay breezy thanks to the multi-layered cooling system including graphene layers, thermal gel and even a turbo fan that rotates at 20,000 RPM. This should apparently improve the airflow while reducing the noise up to 40% over older models and that's just as well really because the last Red Magic I tested sounded like it had a couple of bees trapped inside having very angry bee sex. I don't think the bees actually do it per se but if they did it would definitely sound just like this bugger playing Genshin Impact on high detail settings. And the Red Magic 7 Pro is the first newbie game and smartphone to rock the new Red Core 1 chipset which sits separately from the Snapdragon SoC and is responsible for a variety of bonus bits including the RGB lighter and the haptic feedback etc. That just allows the Snapdragon to concentrate on making your games run fluidly and look extra lush. The Magic 7 Pro also sports a fairly modest 5000mAh battery with 65W charging, you've got a stereo speaker setup and the same incredibly handy shoulder buttons. While the dual X-axis motors provide stronger haptics now apparently compared with previous models. So hopefully at some point I'll have a Red Magic 7 Pro review for you fine folk. Uh, yeah, if you want to see me get murdered and embarrassed over and over and over again by annoying school children. But you know what, kids, if I actually stopped drinking for a couple of days, cleaned up and actually bothered to care about, you know, who shoots who in a mobile game that's not even real, then I'd absolutely school a lot of you. So <laughs> if you don't have much cash to blow on a blower, well, Realme me just shout out a couple of budget phones, the thrillingly titled C31 and C35. 
These Realmes are still running Android 11, unfortunately, with the stripped back Realme UI R launcher slapped on top, but they do have a big old 5000mAh battery stuffed inside as well as micro SD support and a physical fingerprint sensor. That's pretty much where the similarities end though. The C31 has a 720p screen, Unisoc T612 chipset and 13 meg primary camera and that starts at 129 quid in the UK. While the C35 upgrades to a Full HD Plus panel, Unisoc T616 and a 50 meg main shooter for 149 quid and up. And if you bag yourself one of these Realme smartphones in the next few days, you'll get £10 off your purchase. That's 10 shiny pound coins that you can put towards a discount bottle of Jaeger down your local boozery like I just did. Except I didn't actually buy those Realme phones first. And is that all of the big news this week? Um, Apple AR headset reportedly delayed till 2023. Well, who gives a flying bollocks about any of that? Uh, which means, unfortunately, it is time for the part of the show that generally comes towards the end and features a lot of comments from the viewers, hence it's known as Viewer Comments. Viewer Comments. <coughs> Alrighty, uh, so let's kick off with Seth. Hi, Seth. He says, A perfect artistic balance of insightful, informative commentary and egregious swearing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I reckon that some, if not many viewers, would probably say those particular skills are tipped heavily in favour of harsh language, but um, appreciate it. Cheers, Seth. Uh, next up, Shani says, It's somewhat comforting to watch another adult who doesn't pretend to have all their crap together and also does decent tech reviews. I mean, yeah, I'm guilty as charged. My crap is certainly nowhere even close to being together. It's about as widely distributed as could possibly be. Like there was a massive explosion at the crap factory and it just ended up all over the bloody place. Some of it is probably actually somewhere in orbit. That's how not together my crap is. I certainly thought that by the time I was sort of hitting 40, I'd probably have some sort of vague idea of what I was doing in life, but uh, so far, you know, 40 years of winging it. Seems to be working out okay, to be fair. I mean, I'm somehow still alive, and I no longer work in tech support, so bonus. Uh, Richard says, glad to see the quality of Techspert Weekly is degenerating with each passing episode. See, at least you know, with that particular comment, no sarcasm anywhere in sight. Although, the, if the quality is actually getting worse over time, then that's slightly troublesome, because a lot of these episodes I've done under lockdown, where frankly I was off my tits on special brew, or whatever booze I could get a hold of at the time. And also not in the best sort of mental health state. Hello, hello, and welcome you fine ass people to another spurterific episode of Techspert Weekly, the only take takely weck news show. Well, that's a great fucking start right there, isn't it? I mean, I'll be straight up honest, everyone. I've I got nothing. I'm spent, all right. Usually I try and come up with some sort of big idea of something that could possibly resemble an introduction to these little weekly news show things. This week, nah. Uh, next up, James says, One reviewer on Digital Trends said they struggled to tell the difference between BBK's flagships, the Find X5 Pro, the Realme GT2 Pro, and the OnePlus 10 Pro. Should we just go for the cheapest? I mean, they do share a lot of smartphone DNA, has to be said, but there are clear differences between them once you sort of get proper stuck in there. So the Oppo Find X5 Pro is definitely the billy big bollocks of the bunch. It's got the best camera easily, thanks to that Mirasilicon NPU or Mazza for short. So certainly if you shoot a lot of photo and video at night time, it's absolutely untouchable. I found the battery life is the best in that one out of the trio as well. And that design, oof. I mean, oof. I thought the OnePlus 10 Pro didn't have quite as much personality, not quite as nicely designed, the camera tech's not quite as flexible, even though the actual camera app itself is near identical to the Find X5 Pro, thanks to all hassle band shenanigans. Same story with uh, Oxygen OS as, as well, of course, now that it's kind of merging with Color OS over on the Oppos. The Realme GT2 Pro uh, definitely scraps a lot of the more premium features in order to reach a much more affordable Asken price. So the camera tech's more basic, you don't have a telephoto lens, you've got no wireless charging, no IP68 water and dust resistance, and the design overall does feel a lot more plasticky and look a bit more basic. I don't care how much they bang on about paper texture and all this shit. It feels like plastic. But what I'd say is if you don't give a shiny toss about the water resistance, the wireless charge and all the telephoto lens, then definitely go Realme GT2 Pro because it still rocks some very premium specs and features. You've got the gorgeous OLED panel, you've got that fast Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 performance, great battery life and all the rest of it too. But you know, it's not like a thousand fricking pounds like the Oppo Find X5 Pro. But anyway, that's enough random bloody tech talk. All right, I can already feel the migraine kicking in. Uh, next up, Sony Technology Enthusiast says, I'm most definitely looking forward to the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. 
I mean, that is a massive surprise coming from someone with that username, obviously. And yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to the Mark IV as well, but with a healthy side helping of wariness and a big old dollop of hope they don't f*** it up. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's just another crap food-related metaphor that made no sense and just kind of died on its arse halfway through. But anyway, I suspect that we'll hear from Sony very shortly, probably around May-June time will be the official launch of the Mark IV, so stay tuned for more on that. And next up, Graham says, I'm over in the Great White North, Canada, and we get pretty screwed over on the variety of phones we get here. Any recommendations for something kind of upper mid-range that's got a lot of girth to it? Uh, what if it's girth you want, Graham? Well, certainly the Galaxy A53, which I just reviewed, is a proper girthy bugger. That should satisfy. And I'm also actually expecting the new Doogie V20 uh, to arrive any day now, so I'll be giving that a full uh, test and out and everything. That's a uh, proper full-on rugged smartphone that doesn't skimp on the specs either, so it should be able to survive the extreme temperatures of the Great White North quite happily. Uh, but it's also got like a 6,000 milliamp battery, it's got a Dimensity 700 chipset, so it should be respectable performance. Uh, so yeah, so hopefully I'll have more on that soon. Uh, right, next up, uh, Ben says, every year has its ups and downs no matter what century you live in. That's just how life is, getting quite philosophical now here on Textbook Weekly. That always uh, slightly worries me. I know people who describe the 90s like it was the worst decade in existence. What? Yeah, I remember it as being pretty awesome uh, for music of various genres as well as a pretty great decade for films and TV shows. Agreed. Uh, and also moon shoes were still around. Christ, I remember those. Those were basically just like springy plastic boxes that you wore on your feet, right? So you could just bounce around the entire house and just piss off your mum endlessly. Yeah, absolutely agreed. 90s was when I first started properly getting into music. So, you know, I just absolutely fell in love with not just the Britpop stuff, but also obviously the dance music, the prodigy. And in fact, there, there must be a 90s dance nightclub somewhere around where they just play banger after banger. You know, happy hardcore as well. These days, if I just need to smash out some work in a very small, very intense period, just slap on a happy hardcore compilation and it's done in like 25 seconds. And hip hop as well, like 90s was the best decade for hip hop, you know, Big Pun, Notorious B.I.G., you know, Mystical, Ludicrous, all all the rest of them as well. It's, yeah, just like every genre in the 90s was just awesome. And now I'm yeah, you know, I'm in proper grumpy old man mode now. And now these days, these kids, this, this hip hop, phew, it's trash, absolute trash. Anyway, that's enough about how life was great 30 years ago. Uh, next up, Crispy Jams says, hoping to see another Zenfone flip soon. Yeah, me too, man. I love those Zen phones. And a little birdie tells me there might be one later in 2022. So fingers crossed it's just as good as to got the same awesome flip mechanism. Uh, Sebastian says, I've been watching the episode, trying not to think about my job interview tomorrow. Oh, good luck uh, for the job. Or rather, I hope it went well, because this was obviously several days ago. Uh, now, if you let us know how it went down below, fingers crossed you got it. Obviously, you could have just impressed them with some of the fantastic up-to-date tech knowledge that you would have gleaned from watching Techspert Weekly. And Sebastian continues, 2012, the year of the London Olympics and the Euro Cup held in Poland and Ukraine. Yeah, I completely forgot that 2012 was the London Olympics. It's, I can't believe it's a decade ago now. That's slightly terrifying. And that year, I worked in a pub in Earl's Court, crazy times. Oh, by the way, greetings from sunny Catalonia. Oh, you bastard. Uh, Skazzy2305 says, 2004 to 2006 were good years in general. I mean, yeah, that's true, actually. For a good, uh, good chunk of that 2004, 2005 period, I was busy finding myself by backpacking around Asia, consuming my own body weight in shockingly cheap and disgustingly strong alcohol. And perhaps unsurprisingly, what I found out about myself was I really like lying around on beaches getting pissed all day. And then unfortunately my money ran out and I had to bugger off home and get a proper job. Uh, next up, Izan Music says, still waiting for the Honor Magic 4 Pro here in the UK. It was supposed to be released on the 9th, yet no sign. It is launching here on Blighty in the middle of May. I believe it's like the 12th of May or something like that. So still unfortunately a good sort of month or so to wait. But yeah, definitely can't wait to get my mitts on that one. That looks like a good premium blower. Uh, next up, Omiunu Great. Omiunu Great? Sorry, I've no idea how to pronounce that. Omiunu Great says, uh, where do you get your wallpapers? Um, well, I, <laughs> I get this question asked an awful lot here on Textbook Weekly and in my videos in general. And so I thought I'd actually produce a little jingle to answer it. Wall.alphacoders.com Wall.alphacoders.com That's where my wallpapers come from. Wall.alphacoders.com Although in hindsight, I thought that producing that little jingle would save me time in the long run, but then it took me about sort of five to ten minutes to shoot and edit 
that jingle and it generally only takes me about two seconds to say it wall.alphacoders.com so doing a bit of mental math that means I'll have to use the jingle uh, at least 150 times before the whole time cost thing is finally in positive figures and that doesn't even include the time I've just wasted right now explaining this and doing that surprisingly tricky bit of maths in my head um, it's, it's the end of the week, all right, don't judge me. Next up, Terry says, just a quick input about vampire movies. One of my favorites is a low budget affair called Stakeland. Amazing. I've got to admit, I don't think I've actually heard of this one before. So let's just do a quick bit of Googling action. Uh, came out in 2010, directed by Jim Mickle. Uh, I don't think I've heard of that guy um, or indeed this film. So I'll definitely have to check that out. Thanks for the recommendation. Um, hugely running out of time, so better just make a, a couple of quick final ones. Um, Danny Stiff, you win immediately, uh, best username of the week. Afternoon Mackham, still rocking the Huawei Mate 20X. That 7.2 inch screen is bloody lovely. Are there any other large phones coming soon? Not these piddly 6.8 inch things, I mean big screens. I've got to say, Mr. Stiff, it does kind of sound like you're compensating for something else. Um, as far as something that's 7 inch plus, it sounds like your best bet's probably going to be the likes of the Vivo X Fold, whatever the f*** it was. I've already forgotten the name. Was it the X Fold or the X Bend? Uh, let's just scroll back up to the top again. The Vivo X Fold. Yes. Um, yeah, something like that where it unfolds to a bigger display because, no, they don't make them that big yet, although give it frickin' time. And then last up for the week, Chris says, is it sad that one of the highlights of my week is watching Textbook Weekly? And that comment wasn't written by me, uh, by the way. And uh, in a word, yes, but don't worry, I still love you very much indeed. So a massive thank you to everyone who commented last week. Hugely appreciated as always. Please do smash your comments down below and we'll try and get as many of those covered off for next week. Less of the tech questions though, please. My, my head is already hurting just from the two or three in this one. And speaking of next week, next week, next week, what the f*** is next week? Um, I've got absolutely no idea. Um, I'm assuming there'll be more tech launches of some description. There's usually something to be yanked out of a box and piddled about with and I'm of course the, uh, the perfect twat for that. So stay tuned for lots of more hot tech content. Hopefully there'll be more tech news next week so I don't have a complete show on my hands come Friday morning and uh, have yourselves a bloody lovely weekend whatever you're up to cheers everyone love you oh and uh, poke subscribe and ding the notifications bell I forgot to say that cheers